Over the past two months, I have been 3D printing hundreds of hex tiles. Assembled, these form a massive map that will be used in a sandbox, guest-featured Age of Sigmar narrative campaign. I'm Matthew from Mini Wargaming, and in this video, I show why these tiny pieces of plastic generate so much excitement for wargamers such as me. A few months ago, I discovered Hexton Hills, a 3D printable hex system that lets you build your own campaign map. I loved the old Mighty Empires or Planetary Empire tiles that Games Workshop put out. I love building my own campaign maps. We even years ago ran an open narrative campaign for 40K using the Planetary Empire tiles. There's something about building a map for whatever it is that you're doing that just brings the campaign to life. In fact, our Necromunda campaign that is currently going out and started a few weeks ago, used the same tile system to create a map of the Ash Waste, which was just tremendous and added so much depth to the video. Now, I don't like to do anything small, so when I saw these, I had this idea to make a gigantic campaign map for a narrative campaign for Age of Sigmar. That led to the next idea, which was to make it a sandbox narrative campaign that guests could come in and participate in, much like Warzone Apophis was, if you remember that, for many, many years ago that we did for Warhammer 40K. Thankfully, a few months ago, I had gotten into 3D printing, so I already knew the basics of it. So I started printing the tiles. It took me over five weeks to print over 700 tiles, of which over 600 made it to the final map. Now, as a quick side note, if you would like to get these files for your own 3D printer as well, I've teamed up with Graven Guild to bring you a really cool offer. More on that at the end of the video or in the description below. Graven Guild even created an app on their website that lets you create the map digitally first and then click a button and see all of the tiles that you need to print. So you can plan it out before you print a single tile. I use this software to create the map for this entire campaign. All four of the realms are able to connect to the lost city of Nald Baruch in the middle, which actually exists in all four realms at the same time. I even spoke with the creators of the Hexen Hills, the owners of Graven Guild, Dan and Jack, and convinced them to make a few special tiles for it. So they made me a three-tile volcano, which I then used to make a really cool location. They made a three-hex-large big god beast that had died and become a skeleton. And they even made a really cool floating city that I used in the realm of metal. But this project was not without its hiccups. Somehow I ended up printing 150 more tiles than I needed. I thought I had planned everything out, but apparently trying to print this many tiles leads to a bit of waste because I accidentally printed some way too many times and then found out that I hadn't printed enough of certain ones. So I've got boxes of these tiles left over. The next step after that was to magnetize them all. Now, thankfully, the tiles have a handy little magnetizing system. Either you can magnetize them with all these little magnets around the sides, or you can put one on the bottom, which is what I did because I wanted to magnetize it to the board. I made the mistake of using a Gorilla Glue gel super glue, which ended up being really crusty and the magnets would just come right out. I had already magnetized like over 200 of these when we discovered this. And that's when I enlisted the help of Adam from Greenleaf Terrain, who came in and painted all the tiles because let's just face it, I am not that great a painter, and then re-magnetized them all so that they could work on the board. Adam did a fantastic job in painting them. We came up with different color schemes for each of the realms. The Realm of Beasts, of course, was more like a brownish with the greens as well in the forest, and even features the frosty area that is Savage Reach, where the Destruction Alliance will be starting. It also has some pretty cool tiles, like a double legendary tall trees that you can see right here, some citadels, as well as that great beast that I mentioned before. Over to the Realm of Metal, the Realm of Shaman, that, of course, had to be more metallic-themed, and so we have the mountains that have golden peaks. We've got a lake of silver with the floating island sanctuary above it. We've got a brass lake, and we've even got a rusty forest. And then we've got the City of Order that is over there as well, one of the larger cities on the campaign map. Down into the spooky Realm of Shadows, everything had to be a little more dark, and so there's purple hues there with the greens of the marshes and the forests. And then there's the rivers that twist and tangle and are hard to find your way around. And that, of course, leads to the city of the Mirage Haven, which is currently infested with undead. And finally, we go into the fiery realm of Akshi. This is where we use those special volcano tiles to make a really cool mountain range, all full of lava. 
We've got the blistering lava-filled fields. We've got a lava lake. We've got a super hot marsh. We've got the flame crest sea. And of course, the city of Ashenvale, where chaos currently resides. And in the center of it all, we have the lost city of Nal Baruch, a city lost in the age of myth. More on that will be coming in a different video. But needless to say, it is very valuable given the fact that not only does it link all these four realms and produce a really good strong point, but in that special wizard's tower that you see, there are secrets of how the city is able to exist in these realms. It's even rumored that the city used to exist in all eight realms at the same time. If a sorcerer or some other wizard was able to conquer and discover those secrets, think of the power that they would wield. Finally, when it came to assembling it, we had to run into more problems. Not only did we find that more of the magnets that I had put on with that super glue were not working, and so we had to re-glue them and wait, but it turns out I miscalculated the size of the map, and it was a little too big. So with some careful manipulation, we were able to make it work and uh, had to remove a bunch of tiles that aren't even on the final product. So we ended up with even more tiles that are not being used. But the final product looked amazing, but not without one final problem. Yeah, and then Steve broke this tile. Ugh. The floating city got in his way and it fell and shattered into a bunch of pieces. But thankfully he fixed it and now it's back up on the board. Okay, hopefully it'll hold. I'll go do your battle report, Steve. Stop breaking my stuff. So what is this all for? Well, I've already told you that it's for a sandbox narrative campaign. And what that means is for the next few months, we're going to allow guests to come in and choose which territories they're gonna fight over, which alliance they're gonna represent, order, death, chaos, or destruction, and then fight for those territories. And then based on how many territories you hold and which territories you hold, your alliance gets certain boons within the games that you play. So this is where you come in. How do you help? So if you actually want to come in for one of the battle reports, go to miniwargaming.com slash challenge for all of the details and how you can do so. And don't worry if you can't come in right away. We're going to be running this for a few months. And if it goes well, it might become a permanent addition to our Aegis Sigmar lineup. And of course, the biggest way you can support is by becoming a vault member. We need our vault members in order to cover the costs of everything that we're doing here, from all the train building, the 3D printing, to painting, to obviously all of the content producers, the building, everything. Our vault members are what keep us alive. So if you want to become a vault member, you can head over to our site and do so. And for a limited time, we're reopening up our lifetime vault membership sale at miniwargaming.com slash lifetime. So you can pay once and never pay again. That'll allow us to get the funds that we need to be able to run this project and perhaps one for 40K as well when 10th edition comes out, which I've already started to plan. And if you would like to print your own campaign map and you have access to a 3D printer, go to miniwargaming.com slash Hexton to buy the files for yourself. We've even got a special offer going on right now that you can get a package deal and get them even cheaper. All the details will be at miniwargaming.com slash Hexton. We'll also have all the links in the description below. I am so excited for this campaign. I can't wait to do it. We're gonna start filming sometime in the month of May. You should probably start seeing them come out late May. And you can participate in it by watching, by coming in and playing. You can become a vault member so you can see all the other ones because every other episode will be in the Mini Wargaming Vault. All of the information of that will be in the description below. So I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for more of the Lost City of Nal Baruch. Happy Wargaming.